After getting permission from Brigadier General Mitchell, civilian scout and spy James J. Andrews selects 22 men from local infantry to aid in his plan to hijack the Confederate train general. His plan was to ride it north to Chattanooga while doing as much damage as possible to the Western and Atlantic Railroad line along the way. The raiders made their way south in civilian attire, pretending that they were from Fleming, Kentucky, looking for a Confederate unit to enlist in. Thankfully, this not-so-foolproof story lasted them long enough to make it to the rendezvous point. They boarded the General and rode it to Big Shanty, where it stopped for a breakfast break. With both the passengers and the crew off the train, Andrew's group seized their opportunity to capture it for themselves, avoiding the suspicion of local sentries rather miraculously. Come on, boys, come on. It's orders from Beauregard. We can't keep the general waiting. The conductor, William Fuller, saw the train pulling out without him, and along with some of his other crew, they attempted to chase it on foot. When this proved rather nonsensical, they grabbed a nearby hand car instead. By cutting a telegraph line along the way, Andrew's men blocked the communication that was needed to take place to warn the other stations of the stolen general. Unfortunately, they didn't have enough time to do much more than that. They had to move quickly since they were being pursued. Their first major stop was in Kingston, where Andrews knew he would have to pull off to the side to allow another scheduled train to pass. The men at this station heavily questioned Andrews, as they were suspicious of the absence of Fuller. But Andrews had a cover-up story that kept them out of trouble. Gentlemen, I've taken this train by government authority, and I'm running it through to Beauregard. They were then made to wait for unexpected extra trains and cargo behind the scheduled train, which were being sent in as reinforcements due to a Union advance that Andrews did not anticipate. This allowed Fuller and his crew, who were now aboard a locomotive, to close in. Luckily, the raiders made it out of Kingston just in time, and when Fuller arrived, he encountered a yard packed with traffic. So they dropped off their locomotive and ran to Adairsville to use another. They were in such a hurry, they didn't even bother to turn this southbound train around. Fuller's onboard telegrapher sent a message through just before the next telegraph line was cut. Forces were now approaching Andrew's team from the north and the south, so they had to act fast. They attempted to use a flaming rail car to burn the bridge at Chickamauga. We don't wood up pretty soon, we ain't going much farther. Once we set that first bridge of fire, we'll have plenty of time to hunt for wood. But couldn't get the car to light. Shortly after, their steam engine ran out of fuel just 18 miles from Chattanooga. After traveling a total of 87 miles, it was now every man for himself, as they abandoned the general and took off through the Georgia countryside on foot. Scatter and make for the woods, boys. Get home the best way you can. Some escaped, some were exchanged for Confederate prisoners of war, and some were hanged, including Andrews. A number of the raiders were awarded the first ever Medal of Honor, many posthumously, but Andrews was not eligible as a citizen. You fought in your way, I fought in mine. Today, the general rests in the Southern Museum of Civil War and Locomotive History. It is a reminder of a plan that had the potential, but not the preparation, to bring an early end to the Civil War.